My final year project is about improved face mask detection with super resolution techniques. The purpose of this project is to test if the application of super resolution techniques improve face mask detection. The scope of the project includes building a dataset for training, building several models to perform super resolution upscaling and face mask detection, training those models for two times and four times upscaling, measuring and comparing the impact of different super resolution techniques on face mask detection. First, dataset preparation. The datasets found online were either of synthetically applied singular type of masks or they were datasets of images which were of very low resolution. The problem with these datasets is that if all the faces are wearing the same kind of masks or the same color of masks, the models trained on these datasets will overfit heavily on the training data and the performance of these models on the test dataset will be poor. As for low resolution datasets, since this project involves super resolution where the resolution of the images are upscaled by the models, we need high resolution ground truth images which will then be downsized to low resolution images and fed to the model. And when the model upscales these images, these upscaled images will be compared with the ground truth high resolution images. Hence, when the data sets are already of low resolution, it will be difficult for the model to train on these images given that a higher resolution counterpart of these images do not exist. Therefore, I had to create my own data set of high resolution images. To do this, I took a data set of high resolution faces without masks and I used a library that was able to apply synthetic masks on these faces. And for these synthetic masks, I applied various patterns and colors and I also made use of different types of masks so that the data set contained a mixture of face masks even if they were synthetically generated. Along with these synthetically generated images, I was able to find a small number of real-world face mask data sets which contained high resolution images. However, they were in such small quantities that these real-world images had to be combined with my synthetic face mask images to form an entire data set of a good mixture of different kinds of images. As for the different models that I developed for this project, the model on the top left is the baseline model, which does not include any super resolution components. So this model is the baseline model, which purely performs face mask detection on the images. As for the other three models, there are different variants of models, which perform different types of super resolution upscaling on the input image. And when these images are passed through the models, after super resolution is performed by the first part of the model, these images are compared with the high resolution ground truth images to compute the loss of the model. And this loss is used to further improve the weight of the super resolution layers of these models. As for the final bonding box and class predictions, the losses are computed there as well. And that loss is used to fine tune the face mask detection layers of the models to be able to identify the faces and classify the masks accurately. Therefore, these models make use of a combined loss function where each of these loss functions are specifically adapted to the specific implementations of each of the models. Using these loss functions, all of these models were trained as much as possible through convergence. And here are the image outputs from these models. These are the intermediate image outputs of the models after having performed super resolution with the best trained models. And a comparison is done between standard bicubic upscaling, high resolution ground truth, and the super resolution outputs of the various models that I trained. And as seen from the images, EM2 was the best performing model, which performed much better than bicubic upsampling. And EM3 also performs better than bicubic upsampling. However, EM1 does not seem to perform as well as even bicubic upsampling, and out of all the models, it happens to be the worst performing model. Here, all the models are compared against each other, and the plot on the left shows the PSNR versus inference time. The plot on the right shows the mean average precision versus inference time. 
PSNR is a metric that's used to measure the reconstruction quality of SR images. So the SR images are compared with the high resolution image, where a high resolution image is said to have an infinite amount of PSNR. Therefore, the higher the PSNR value, the more accurate an image is when compared with its high resolution counterpart. As for mean average precision, or MAP for short, it is a metric that's used to measure how accurate an object detection model is. So this metric takes into account how accurately the model is able to place a bounding box around an object and how accurately the model classifies that object within the bounding box. As we can see here, EM2 has the highest PSNR and it also has a relatively high mean average precision when compared to the baseline model. And EM3 has the second highest PSNR and it has the second highest and also the highest mean average precision. In conclusion, we can say that applying super resolution techniques does in fact improve face mask detection. Or in this project's case, incorporating super resolution into an object detection model and creating an integrated model to perform face mask detection is definitely useful. Thank you.